We turn now to the fires in Hawaii. So as the Hawaii death toll climbs uh, and a chaotic emergency response ensues, uh, Joe Biden was asked about the situation in Maui uh, as he got into his SUV yesterday. Let's take a look at this. Will you come talk about the Hawaii response, Mr. President? Uh, nothing there. Nothing there. Oh, nothing there. Nothing there, nothing there, nothing there. Now, he did put out a statement uh, yesterday on Twitter, or as we shall say, uh, or on his X. His people put out a statement. Yeah, his people put out a statement, his handlers. As residents of Hawaii... Oh, see, that was nice. He put the little apostrophe between the two eyes. That's very woke of him. So that, that buys him some goodwill, does it not? Uh, mourn the loss of life and devastation taking place across their beautiful home. We mourn with them. Like I've said, not only our prayers are with those impacted, but every asset we have that has not been shipped to Ukraine will be available to them. Uh, here's the here's the latest. My edit there. Number as long one, as they don't need drones, bullets, tanks, yeah, right, rifles, exactly. FEMA's temporary sheltering assistance now available for residents who were displaced from their homes by the wildfires, allowing survivors to shelter in hotels or motels temporarily as they develop a long-term housing plan. I like this one. We're laser focused on getting aid to survivors, including critical needs assistance, a one-time $700 payment per household, offering relief during an unimaginably difficult time. That's probably well, that should, good that for a few days' right. worth of groceries out in Hawaii. Uh, we talked a little bit about this well, on you got to make it stretch. You know, you got to eat pasta. Well, even, I mean, we were talking about this on RBN last night about the cost of housing in Hawaii. Everything is very expensive there yeah, because yeah. It's they an, there are islands everything. in the middle of the ocean. Yeah. To get stuff there is very expensive. It's very expensive yeah. to import all the stuff that you need to just live your life. So, I mean, a one-time payment of $700 is insulting to anyone who's lost everything in a wildfire, uh, but especially out there in the, what is the most expensive state in the union to live at a time when inflation is already up, gas prices are already up, a $700 payment per household, not even per individual, per household. So a family of four, $700. Well, here's Midwestern Marks uh, reacting to that $700 per month payment. He puts it pretty well. Sometimes when someone gets it right, you just... Uh, the death toll in Hawaii props. has now reached 96 as wildfires continue to ravage the state. And Joe Biden says that we will be using every asset we have to help people on the island. And survivors of the wildfire, people who lost their homes and everything in them, will be getting a payment of $700 from the U.S. government. And while Joe Biden was announcing that, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken announced that we will be sending another $200 million worth of weapons to Ukraine. Do these people seriously think that there's nowhere where that money could be better utilized right now? American citizens in Hawaii who just lost everything are getting a one-time payment of $700, while the corrupt government of Ukraine is getting $200 million for more weapons. But these guys aren't beholden to the American citizens, because we don't have a democracy. They're beholden to the military-industrial complex and big finance capitalists who pay for their campaigns, or the companies that lobby them and give them cushy jobs once they're done in Washington, D.C. The death you know, this was something that you made uh, this point on the post duopoly show how when you get to the unwinding of an empire the sort of peripheries bear the brunt of that first and then you know we're here close to new york fairly close to washington dc right in those sort of capital centers um we'll probably feel it last but yeah yeah i mean out there you just feel and there's not even a sense of outrage about it now you know I mean, when George Bush let New Orleans drown, people were outraged about that. That was really the turning point. It wasn't it was not the Iraq war. It was, you know, September 2005 when you had people in New Orleans drowning and no help was on the way. And he said, Brownie's doing a heck of a job. That's what turned public opinion against George W. Bush. Yeah. Um, th there's just not that sense of outrage now. And I don't think it's just because of Democrats in the White House now and the media is partial to them. I think it's it is indicative of a bigger thing, which, Russell, you talked a little bit about last night, about how, and this is what I've talked about, too. At the end of Empire, what happens? It's just fatigue sets in. You know, right. we just run out of gas slowly to the point where these right. things that used to matter a lot don't matter because we don't expect any better at this point.
Yeah. Um, it's it's kind of like the mass shootings. You, you, it's surprising what people can get desensitized to. But now, because we're getting increasing numbers of natural disasters, they're not as rare as they used to be because of climate change. Um, and we're never really capable of dealing with them. We're getting desensitized to it like we've gotten desensitized to gun violence. Somebody somebody wrote an article. A lot of people in our audience probably read it. You probably read it. I can't remember what country he was from, but the, this article made the rounds a few years back. He was from a country in the Middle East or North Africa that had collapsed. And he said collapse doesn't happen the way you think it does it yes, doesn't happen all at once it's gradually you can't go to work today because there's violence on the street and your paycheck doesn't come next week because the banks are closed it's 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 one thing after another and one of the points he made was you you would be very surprised how much you will go about your business as your society is collapsing around you it's not like all of a sudden one day everyone just stops going to work it's not like that it's a, it's a it's a process and we're in that process and and yes just as with every empire before us the regions at the periphery of the empire collapse first yep and if we see a little bit more scenes here from Hawaii. This is CNN catching up to someone who apparently uh, could give a shit about the censors over at CNN because she lets the expletives fly when she's asked what's going on, trying to get her hands on some of these relief supplies. Let's hear what she has to say here. Have you been waiting here? We've been here since 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon. All these vehicles have been waiting. We've been just right. Since 4 o'clock yesterday <laughs> afternoon. Waiting online? Yeah. Wow. What, for, for yes, supplies? I'm supplies, yeah. And all we're doing, all, what we're doing is trying to go get supplies and come back. And they should escort us back because we got families, we got kids, we got shit going on. And this is inadequate management. I've been in plenty of fucking disaster zones, and this is bullshit. Did they broadcast that on CNN? Yeah, that was live. That was live on CNN. Now you have some people talking about land grabbers coming in and offer to buy people's property um, because there's going to be a run on that property now. So let's take a look at one of these. Okay, I got to tell you guys, I am so frustrated with investors and realtors calling the families who lost their home, offering to buy their land. How dare you do that to our community right now if you are a victim, call them i sorry had a little bit poor reception right there if you are a victim and they are calling you please get their name people keep calling me sorry get their business name so we can put them on blast this is some pilau heva shit happening right now i am so frustrated hearing since yesterday that multiple families that i know personally were reached out and offered money from investors and realtors shame on you shame on you again just talk about a decline of an empire a decline of a country you have a situation like this and already you have the vultures swooping in offering to buy people's land after their house fucking burned down well i guess you don't need that anymore it's gonna be hard to sell that for anything of value here we'll give you a few bucks for it we'll take it off your hands just the the absolute bloodlessness of it all good, and good luck again. good luck at and taurus in a burned out moonscape right <laughs> exactly exactly Talk about further degradation of trust. You know, this was interesting because you had Barack Obama post a video, and don't worry, I won't put everybody through the pain of watching the video, but he posted a video to his Twitter um, urging people to donate to the Red Cross. And a lot of people, Max Blumenthal was like one of the high profile accounts who did this, but in response to this tweet, and I would put the Blumenthal tweet up, but I just tried to bring it up while Russell was talking and it's glitching 
like crazy. I don't know what's going on with X right now, but it's it's not working right, so I'm not going to risk it. But he said, it'll take all of us coming together and doing what we can to help those in need in Maui uh, and uh, Lahaina right now. Sorry, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, I hope you'll join me in donating to the Hawaii Red Cross. And a lot of people mention that the Red Cross sets aside a significant percentage of their donations for administrative costs. Max Blumenthal tweeted out, you know, the 500 million they raised for Haiti, 100 million of that went to administrative costs. And, you know, they didn't do as much work as they promised to do. And then I thought it was kind of telling because Barack Obama, the very next day, just seven hours ago as we broadcast this live if you're looking for more ways to support folks i hope you'll consider donating to these local organizations that are providing direct support on the ground bill clinton today also our hearts go out to the people of hawaii if you're looking to contribute to local organizations working on the ground please consider the hawaii community foundation maui strong fund which is distributing 100 percent of funds to community organizations. So in response to a lot of the backlash, you saw these figures start saying, okay, here's other alternatives to the Red Cross that you can donate to that give 100% to the organizations, right? Which is just kind of interesting that they would go Red Cross first, and then when they get called out on the fact that the Red Cross is notorious for wasting a lot of that money, they say, okay, here's some that we know it's going to. Again, not to get conspiratorial, that's not where I'm coming from. What I'm saying is like, it just shows even the Red Cross like during her, during the Hurricane Katrina days, the Red Cross was the heroic organization. That was the white knight that we all thought was right. going to swoop in and save the day. Haiti, same thing. Now even those institutions we look at with such skepticism and cynicism because even the Red Cross has squandered all the goodwill that it had built up over the past several decades. So this is just, again, you look, just look at a situation like this and you see a complete picture of billions of dollars going out the door to Ukraine. The president says no comment. And then the president says each household, not individual, household will get a one-time $700 payment to help you get back on your feet after your fucking house burns down on an island in the middle of the fucking ocean. Now you got them saying, oh, donate to the Red Cross. They get ratioed. Hey, the Red Cross is a scam organization. Okay, fine, not the Red Cross here. These organizations give 100% of funds. You got realtors and vulture capitalists calling families who just lost everything, offering to buy their land for five cents on the dollar, whatever the fuck they paid for it. I mean, what an absolute nightmare. And what a perfect metaphor a horribly tragic metaphor, but a very fitting metaphor for what a just absolute hellhole this country has turned into, which is why I told Thomas Frank, fuck the country. I don't care if Trump went. Don't tell me about democracy. Don't tell me we have anything to lose. You have a fucking horror show in Hawaii right now. And look at everything that's happening. You got the country agitating World War III overseas, telling these people who just lost everything, we'll give you 700 bucks you got the fucking Red Cross having trouble raising money because they have a reputation now for squandering it. You have real estate interests trying to take advantage of the situation immediately. I'm sorry, what is there left to be invested in in this country? What is left to latch on to? What are we so worried about losing to Donald Trump? Oh, if Donald Trump gets reelected, we're going to lose our democracy. This this is what you you think we have something to lose. You look at this situation in Hawaii and you're going to tell me that this country has something to lose. I don't buy it. So you have this situation. Sorry, I know I rambled there, but you have a situation like this. And then I've talked to people today who are asking me about the news. Are they mentioning this? No, they're asking what's going to happen to Donald Trump. So you think he's going to go to jail? I don't fucking care if he goes to jail. Who the fuck cares Donald Trump goes to jail? Look at what's happening to real people and look at the response. That's the crisis. Yeah, I mean, I mean, for the liberals, Donald Trump bothers them because they can afford to be concerned with their psychological discomfort. Right, right. They, they don't. Yeah. They don't actually think he's going to cost them a dollar. Exactly. Uh, probably, probably do better off financially in that class with Donald Trump as president. Uh, it's just they just can't stand to see him tweeting, and you know, just it just gets their panties in a bunch. Um, Joe Biden. I got the impression 
that they're dealing with this sundowning old man that they're trying to pretend is still uh, competent to be president. So the best they can do is to drill into his head when in doubt, don't comment. I, I think that's what happened there. I think I think he's too mentally deteriorated to answer that question off the top of his head. Right. But right. he's not so mentally deteriorated that he can't remember to say no comment when he doesn't right. know what to say. But honestly, no, like I think that's what that, no, that's, I, th I think you're that's right. That's how I that think, read to me. Right. I they think told they didn't him don't don't him take to, yeah, right. don't take impromptu questions. You know, when you're what do they not need this sure. guy saying, oh, yeah, everybody's going to get five grand a piece when they're only going to give him 700. Right. How right, do they know he's right. not going to say something right. totally so, non-factual that they're, they're going to have to live up to or whatever? That, right. That's it. Just 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 say no comment when in doubt. In terms of loss of faith. <laughs> Remember, Jake the, Sullivan's the actual president. You're just that, playing that, him on TV. So only well, say what we could control. Right. That's it. And, um, you know, when you look at this corruption, even of organizations like the Red Cross, I mean, this is what happens when your civilization is falling apart. I mean, it's it's all the uh, it's all the rats running around trying to trying to grab what they can before the ship sinks. And um, eventually that extends even to uh, the noblest or once noblest organizations. It's, uh, you know, the Tao Te Ching was written as advice to the emperor for how to govern. And one of the things it says that I've always found very true is that the people will behave as the emperor behaves. If the emperor lies, the people will lie. If the emperor steals, the people will steal. And uh, it's very true when your entire elite class are, are a pack of thieves who won't even pass right. a law stopping themselves from trading the companies they regulate on the right, stock right. market. Yeah. I mean, at that point, you're sending a message out to everybody. Get yours. Fuck everybody else. Why Why would you try? There, there was an episode, I often think of this, there was an episode of the old TV show, The Honeymooners, which is very beloved by people from the outer boroughs of New York even today. And um, the whole plot of the episode was that he was feeling guilty because he didn't report a gift of a, of a clock to the IRS. That episode would be unintelligible today. The whole, the whole premise would make no sense that somebody would care this much about not reporting something to the IRS. That, that was in America where people believed so much in the institutions of the country that the idea that that was a moral question, not a strategic question of getting in trouble, but a moral question, that made sense to people who watched that then. And now it's just like, what? We've come so far from that because back then we believed in our institutions and our leaders. And a lot of people will retroactively go back and say, well, but this was going on, but that was going on. Yes, of course. There's never been a society that didn't commit horrors and atrocities. Not a super society, not a society with very advanced technology and uh, material prosperity. That's always built somewhat on suffering and blood and exploitation. There's never been a, a civilization that achieved that level of uh, advancement that wasn't to some to a lesser or greater extent at other people's expense um but to retroactively look back and say well that invalidates all the accomplishments of that society that invalidates its entire view of itself and beyond that this is a concept i think a lot of people have a hard time with it it doesn't so much matter what a society believes, it matters that the society believes. Once a society stops believing in anything, right? once it stops believing in itself, once it stops believing in its core myths about itself, even if they're myths, the belief drives people forward. It drives people to accomplishment. It drives people to try to achieve certain moral ideals. Once they, that is, that is probably the greatest symptom that your society is collapsing, 
that people fall into a kind of bitter cynicism and an alienation from their own institutions. Well, yeah, I mean, that's 100 percent true. Um, that's a lot of what the war on terror was about. That's what the project for a new American century was about, that think tank where you had a lot of future Bush cabinet members start outlining the agenda for the next right. hundred years of right. permanent war. Permanent war, yeah, lines the pockets of the masters of war here, and that's certainly a benefit of it. But the other benefit of it, probably the more important benefit of it long term, was it gives the country what Russell just said. It gives the country a reason to exist because it gives right. it something to fight for, right? War gives meaning to a nation in a lot of ways, in a very sick and right. destructive and vile and vulgar way. Obviously, I mean, my whole, the core of my politics is anti-war politics, so I certainly don't mean that in a good way. But after the Cold War, there was that end of history period that also coincided with the giant tech bubble where everybody had a lot of money, but you know, the, the, the central planners knew that wasn't going to go on forever. They knew they were going to need some ideological battle to invest the country in so that the country had an ethos so it had uh something to to exist for something to fight for something to strive for and that became the war on terror and because the war on terror was so cynically weaponized in such a way that all of that goodwill that they thought they were going to build up for a century was squandered instantly because it was so transparently obvious what a, a horrific uh, lie it was all based on. Now we are where we are, where the country has nothing to fight for, right? It, it has no reason to be. Right. We're just a giant strip mall at this point. And so that's where we're at. And that's part of why we are witnessing this decline so rapidly. Um, and it has a lot to do with that. It has a lot to do with, you know, as Russ said, the country just doesn't believe in anything. It has no sense of right. momentum. It has no reason to exist. Whenever a thing doesn't have a reason to exist anymore, it starts to wither and it eventually will die. That's what people well, I, do, right? Once people can't make more people and they can't work, and you know, that's when the body starts to gradually shut down and eventually we go away as organisms. Any living thing undergoes that natural lifespan. And we are in, as a country, the waning days. It's very, very obvious. It's very obvious. And all of those factors are coming together, and you can see it all in the response to these fires. Please clap.